Thank you. And your colleagues and friends. <laughs> Putting our music room to very good use. Uh, I think there's a... Oh, you have it. Okay. I got, yeah, I got one. Uh, it's my honor and pleasure to introduce you to Grace a little bit more, get to know her. If you haven't heard of Grace Kelly, then you haven't traveled on the T today. Improper <laughs> Bostonian just came out. Yeah, just today. today. Um, you are incredibly, incredibly busy, uh, and you do a lot of diversified things. Yeah. You originally from Boston, moved to LA, now in New York. Yes. But Boston this week, why? So yesterday, is this on? This is cool? You can hear? Um, so yesterday, I, I'm part of this documentary about a mentor. Oh, now it's on. I'm part of a documentary about a mentor of mine in music. He passed away, but he's the late great saxophonist Frank Morgan. And he was a protege of the bebop saxophonist and the king, Mr. Charlie Parker. Uh, Frank was asked to join um, Duke Ellington's orchestra when he was 18, but he couldn't because his parents said he was too young. And he should be one of those jazz saxophonists that everyone knows, but um, spent 30 years in and out of San Quentin due to drugs. So this is a documentary about his life, and I got to know him in the last two years of his life, and we were very close. We played a lot. So that premiered in Boston at the, in Brookline, at the Brookline College Corner Theater. And it was exciting, so that's why I'm here. Because it's played at the LA Film Fest, it's played all over, but that was its first screening in, uh, in the area. Okay. But you'll also be back in Boston. I will. At the so end of the month. May 22nd, Sunday, May 22nd, you can put it down in your Google calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I will be at the Berkeley Performance Center with a fantastic band of mine. And um, we're going to be celebrating my new CD. And uh, it's going to be a multimedia visual thing and really cool. So I, I hope you guys can come. It's going to be lots of fun. Incredible. So you, so a new CD, with, yeah. is this with a, a regular band? A new, so this CD has probably like a, a 20 plus musicians on it, including special guests. John Batiste oh, yeah. sings and plays harmonic board on it. 
Um, Michael Lee, who's the founder of the band Snarky Puppy and plays bass in that band. Shana Steele, motion worker. But there's a lot of cats, including b band members of mine and then just um, other incredible musicians that added their talents to it. And is this all originals, or is it a mix of originals and, and It's a mix standards? of it. There's, okay. there's a good amount of originals, and then there's some of my favorite standards. And it's kind of a thematic CD in the way that from the first track to the last track, it goes from darkness into light. I call it an emotional musical journey. And every song kind of uncovers more of that. So uh, that's how I picked the songs that I wanted. So then will you be touring elsewhere to support the album? Yeah, so I've been doing... Um, we're, we're going to be doing some stuff in the West Coast coming up, and we have some gigs. I've been doing this gig with John Batiste, um, playing on The Late Show oh with yeah. Stephen Colbert. So that's like an everyday thing, Monday through Friday. So it's it's been a little bit tricky to figure out uh, how to kind of get it all together, but they've been super flexible in letting me go off and perform. Like today, they were like, okay, go do your thing, and then I, I, come, I drive back to New York tonight, and then I'm on the show tomorrow. So Wow. So yeah, it's it's... We're, that came up so last minute for me in December that it's just been a juggling act now of being like, okay, how can we fit in all of these great things? Gosh, I can imagine. So <laughs> yeah. then, but that's not the only way we'll see you on TV, right? Right. So I was asked in um, May, I think the, the premiere is May 31st, right? On NBC, there's a new show called Maya and Marty in Manhattan, and it's Martin Short, Martin Short and Maya Rudolph. It's kind of an updated Carol Burnett variety show. And I was asked to be in the band for that. So I'm hopping over to Rockefeller Sweet. Center to record that. And that's going to be like six episodes right after um, America's Got Talent on NBC. So you can tune in. The first episode will be May 31st. And it's supposed to be a lot of like musical guests and comedians. So I'm guessing it's going to be really fun. But then you're also on an Amazon show, right? Yes, or I am. Yes, there. <laughs> yeah, it's been like a TV year, which is great. I'm exhausted. Just There's, so some of you might know uh, the great... New York Times best-selling author Michael Connelly, and he writes these detective novels. One of them is about Harry Bosch. I mean, he's written 20-something books about him, and it got turned into a TV show that Amazon Prime picked up. So season one was super successful. People loved it. It's so well done. And then in season two, um, it features my band and me playing in front of the main character, Harry Bosch, and I'm playing a song that I wrote for him called Blues for Harry Bosch, which is the first track on the CD. And so that came out March 11th, the whole season, and it's very binge-watching worthy. <laughs> and they just got the green light for season three, too. So, yeah. But it came about, Michael Connolly, um, the author, wrote an email to me, and he said, hey, I wrote a part for you in our TV show. Any chance that you would want to come do it? I was like, hmm. <laughs> Let me check, yeah. <laughs> I'm free. I'm very free. <laughs> you have to clear it with Colbert, but otherwise, <laughs> yeah. you're free. So it's interesting. So you're, you work with Stephen Colbert, yeah. uh, and you're doing the show with Martin Short, yeah. Maya Rudolph. All master improvisers yeah. in comedy. Totally. You uh, yourself a master improviser in music. Thanks. Now, how? What is that relationship? Do you get to collaborate improvisationally with these folks? Like, what is that relationship like? Well, it's just super fun for me because I love the spontaneity of jazz and like the fact that we all just got together this afternoon and playing music that we didn't even rehearse before today. That's kind of how Stephen operates. It's really fun. Like certain moments in the show, you might not see it because it's during commercial breaks, but for the live audience, he'll like come over to the band and he'll start singing and dancing wi with us or like just go over to the piano and start playing. And so it's just the mentality behind these great comedians with the musicians. We're all from the same language, which I love. So it just makes everything feel much more fluid. And then according to your bio, you say that not only do you use improvisational techniques or mindset in your music, but also in the rest of your life. Totally. Can you give an example of some non-musical related uh, <laughs> incident yeah. or anything where yeah. improvisation helped you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important The the since I've been studying jazz and studying improvisation, it just kind of creeps into my life. And sometimes I'm like way more laid back about situations than I probably should be, but it's just <laughs> how I've been trained. But there was this one time years ago that I was supposed to go to the Apollo Theater in New York City to go see a show that featured all the jazz greats, like Dave Brubeck was there, Winton Marsalis. The woman said, woman putting on the concert was like, yeah, you can get in, I'll get you backstage. So I was super excited. And then last minute she said, actually, all the tickets are sold out, we can't get you in. And so, you know, maybe the non-improvising grace would be like, ah, oh, shoot, and just super bummed out and go to my hotel and like eat Twizzlers and be sad. But, um, 
I was with one of my mentors that night, and he said, well, why don't we go to Roth's Steakhouse? There's a great trio playing nearby. So I was like, okay, cool. So we went to Roth's, and I had my horn with me, and the pianist playing said, hey, why don't you come sit in with the band? He was great. The trio was awesome. And then he said, why don't you stick around for the second set, and we have a trumpeter coming in. Is it okay if he sits in with us, too? I'm like, sure, cool. It's your gig. And then who walks in? The trumpeter is Wynton Marsalis to Roth's Steakhouse in front of like yeah. 10 people who probably didn't even know who he was because they were just eating steaks and not paying attention. <laughs> we played a whole second set together. And then like a week later, I got a call from his people being like, would Grace be a guest with um, Wynton's Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra at Rose Hall for three nights? And that was kind of a case of like really going with the flow and something way better and amazing happened. So awesome. Yeah. No, I. I want to get back to the music because there's a lot more music coming. But yeah. I just, it, it's it's really impressive uh, to kind of run down your history because you wrote your first song at seven. Yeah. You recorded your first record at 12. Yeah. You wrote an entire arrangement for the Boston Pops at 14. Right. And you played at Obama's inauguration at six. I'm tired. Woo, that's Again. a lot of stuff. That's <laughs> Um And it, it it's hard to read anything about you without seeing the term prodigy kind of following you around. Right. And, and I wonder what your relationship is to that word. How do you feel now that, I mean, you're a grown up, you're, in, in, you're um, in the same industry as many other adults. Like, is that something that you have a mixed relationship with that, that word? Or how, how has it been to be mm. a child in jazz? Yeah. Like, it's funny, because I never put that word upon myself. And it was funny when that word just started floating around. I mean, I remember the first time I saw it, it was like, what? I'm not a prodigy. Like, it's just something that I found early on, had amazing teachers, and was lucky to find a passion that uh, I was good at from an early age. But I guess that's what like the outside world was calling me. So I never took it too seriously, but then I, I did end up hearing the word quite a lot. So I think I have like many feelings with the word. I'm very glad that I started young and was able to like have people start to know about my music and all that from a young age. And then at the same time, I kind of just figure, I was just practicing and doing my thing and trying to work really hard as I continue to do every day. And and that's, yeah, we call it whatever you want. And your musicianship speaks for itself. So there you go. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. And let's let it do that some more. So Grace Kelly and the GCAM All-Stars. <laughs> Give it up for them. Look at that. Innovators issue. Let's have that word. Innovator. I met Diego last time I was here at Google. I played with them in, in the cafeteria. Now you have like this incredible theater, which I was saying to Bob, um, could, is nicer than like a lot of jazz clubs. It, it would be, jazz musicians would be so excited if this got in like the roster of the performing <laughs> tours. But anyways, this next song is Diego, so do you want to say anything about it? Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Diego's Rumba.